The most critical part of the whole saw are the points of the teeth. Somewhere between 50 and 80 years old. And the gullets are another piece. And then the tooth. When the tooth gets filed back too short, you just roll the gullets out, set another tooth in, and twist it back in with a special wrench. This is me at age 28. I'm operating a portable sawmill that I designed and built six years earlier, 1980, at age 22 years old. I learned almost everything that I know about circular saws from this man, Sam Ball. He was extraordinary. His story is the story of Americana. Today we take lumber for granted. It's everywhere and it's cheap. But before sawmills were invented, lumber was hard to come by. In order to make a big beam before sawmills, trees were hewn. That is, the sides were chopped flat with axes. If boards were needed, they could be split and planed. The first sawmill, and put that in air quotes, please, was a pit saw. A pit saw was a reciprocating saw powered by men. The next logical step was to attach a reciprocating saw to a mechanical power source like water or wind in a wooden framework and uh, reduce the labor involved. In this picture, as you can see, there's an old man tending a sash saw by himself. It looks to me like this is probably powered by water. But wasn't long until people made gang saws out of a sash saw. That is, they would have two or three or four or six sash saws in one frame, increase the horsepower, and profoundly increase the productivity. The Industrial Revolution may, had made two big advances that changed sawmilling profoundly. Steam power and circular saws. A circular saw with this rotary action was far more efficient than a reciprocating saw. It enabled rim speeds, that is, the speed at the edge of the saw to get up towards the magic 10,000 foot per minute target speed, which almost every saw of any size uses even today. Right around 1925, Sam and his brother Tom hopped a freight train from Indiana and headed west. They got to, to the Pacific Northwest, and for about 10 years, Sam worked various jobs before he found his niche. It was sawmilling. And from 1935 to 1945, Sam Ball and his partner sawed 69 million board feet of railroad ties during the time that industry was expanding to accommodate the war effort. This caused him to receive a deferment on military service because of his age, but primarily because he was a key player in a key industry. The nation needed railroad ties and Sam Ball knew how to make them with steam. He retired in 1945, moved to the area in Oregon where I then met his granddaughter, and that was where I became acquainted with Sam. He still had a little sawmill after he had retired, and I got that from him and built it, disassembled the stationary sawmill and built it portable. The portable sawmill was an adventure in education and frustration. It's hard to make a 50-inch diameter saw blade stand up and run. I finally figured it out. It took me about two months to put the thing together to where it would basically function. But it took me a solid year to figure out how to make that thing cut. There are six variables that I just had to figure out by trial and error. There was no internet, there were no manuals. There was no one else in my community whose opinion I could trust. Sam couldn't help me. I was on my own. And it took me a long time to figure out how to make that thing stand up and cut. Rim speed refers to the speed at the outside of the saw. It's measured in feet per minute. And the target rim speed, regardless of the size of your saw, is 10,000 feet per minute. It has to be steady. It has to be predictable. It has to be transmitted from the motor to the saw the same way every moment. Saw tension refers to the tension that is put into a circular saw with hammers on a saw hammering anvil. The tension in the saw enables it to arrive at a condition of maximum stiffness 
when the target rim speed is reached. It's critical that it reach that tension in order for the saw to stand up and cut straight. If the saw is not sharp, it won't cut. If the teeth are not square, it won't cut straight. If the bottom of the bits are, don't have a uniform pitch to the filing, it will tend to dodge. If the gullets themselves are not sharp, they will not collect and hold the sawdust until it's discharged at the bottom of the cut. The feed works that I designed was flat belts and they were um, continually slipping. Additional tension on the handle would speed up the rate of feed. And so feed rate is a critical piece. If you feed too fast, it doesn't matter what your horsepower is, you're gonna lose rim speed, it will change the saw tension, your saw will run out or in to the log. So feed rate is carefully monitored at all times with your ears and by sensing vibration in the frame of the mill. Power, you've gotta have plenty. It's gotta be smooth, it's gotta be steady, it can't be interrupted. Each tooth remo removing a certain amount of wood requires a certain amount of horsepower and you have to be able to depend on that. Let's see, that's a 292 Chevy engine. It developed 110 horsepower at the top of the power curve, but I think I'm only using about 80. Saw. Lead describes the toe in of the saw towards the path, incoming path of the log. If the saw is parallel to the path of the log, then the log itself, the newly cut face, is rubbing on the saw as this log goes by and creates heat. Heat in a saw causes expansion. Expansion changes tension. So lead is a very small amount of toe-in where the leading edge of the saw is closer to the track than the tailing edge of the saw. It has to be right. So as it turned out, in the rearview mirror, thinking about and looking at pictures of that sawmill, it was a nifty design. It was a nice compromise between portability and productivity. My best day ever was 7,500 board feet of two by material with myself and my dad um, as the entire workforce, just the two of us. That's a lot of lumber. Almost none of the modern portable sawmills that are so slick and so safe and so accurate and so portable, none of them can match that kind of productivity on second growth Douglas fir logs. I'm proud of the way it worked out. If you're looking at this video and thinking that mill looks dangerous, you're right. And I was aware of that, but I had a family to feed, I had work to do, I had a dream about making money with this thing, and I was careful. Sam had operated mills much more than I did on a much more high production basis, and he had all of his fingers except one, but a table saw got that one. So when I built my mill, I was using a technology that had been around a long time. I didn't realize it, but that technology was about to become obsolete. Portable sawmills now are just, they're beautiful little machines. The band saws particularly are safe and effective and they're efficient. They don't make much sawdust and they cut accurately and they're highly portable. It's been a whole new era in portable sawmilling that Sam could have never imagined. And I frankly didn't see coming, but we will have more about the current state of portable sawmills and the wonderful work that they do coming soon. When I push down on the handle, it picks up on this belt with this idler and tightens the left hand belt. The left hand belt goes clear around some more shivs underneath that are on the shaft that turns that spindle. So when I turn the shaft in one direction, it feeds the carriage ahead. When I pick up on the handle, it tightens up the other belt, which just passes over the top of the same shaft, causing the spindle to turn in the opposite direction. It's a pretty good feed works unless it starts raining, like it is right now, at which time it doesn't work worth a darn. Uh, Let's see what else. It weighs about 8,200 pounds with the motor. You can pull it behind a three-quarter ton pickup with no trouble. There are brakes on the on the axles. 
The hitch is designed to be put on either end, so if you have to pull into a landing from one direction or the other, depending on where the logs are, you can put the hitch on either end. You said you it won't be a silent movie. Look at this mill. It's an example of cutting edge, high production, softwood sawmilling technology. It's also in Sam Ball's um, community. It is partially owned by another one of his grandson in laws. Sam's lumbering legacy has reached far into the future of his family. When I do right, will you be there by the gate? And will you recognize me? Even though my face is aged Cause I will listen for your voice And it will lead me to your hand And we will walk together This is where forever begins You'll have to count higher on his mustache than on mine. Oh, I don't think so. Either. Come on, Jan. Come here, Costly, buddy. Let's get the whole thing. Okay. Did we tell him the date just so we can remember? What is the date? 28? 29. 8. 28. 28. April 28, 1986. Kendall just bought our place. Kendall and Joanne. Bob and Kathy Wilcock are helping us move. And Jan and Bubby and Costly and Kena. What's the name of the other Olsen? Kendra. Kendra. <laughs> Come on, Jan.